Alright everybody, welcome back to the Fish Dimension, and uh, let me actually take my GoPro out here and use it to film myself. How do you like that? That's uh, arm, arm view there, some arm action. Uh, hello. Alright, so we are here at a little pond on Baden Lake, North Carolina. This is actually the second spot that we ever fished in. And uh, we never tried cat fishing here, so we're going to try that tonight. So uh, just f until the sun goes down here, you're going to watch me uh, catch some, some bait fish, some little bluegills and stuff for tonight. And once the evening hits, we will only be uh, turning the camera on when we have a fish on. So hopefully we get a uh, good video out of this and uh, just uh, have a look around, enjoy the beauty of this, uh, this little pond. Gorgeous place. Quiet, too. Not very pressured. All right, so I'm going to stick you back in the, the old chest cavity here. Excuse my rough handling. Oh, and uh, today, because I was too lazy to bring uh, more than one of my own rods, I am going to be pan fishing using a 50-pound braid on my, my catfish rod here. Uh, this is a Daiwa Samurai. It's, uh, it's a medium uh action actually but uh because of money it became my catfish rod since i use uh other rods for everything else and uh it's been performing quite well in that function i have no complaints uh you just got to put the right uh pound line on there and you're golden uh we've caught you know six and seven pound catfish on it so far and it's done just fine I don't know what would happen if I hooked into a, uh, you know, 30 to 50 pound catfish, but uh, part of the fun in, uh, you know, budget fishing is finding out those kinds of things. So uh, maybe tonight we'll be able to see that. And yeah, I'm, I'm sitting down here, you know, we're just, we're just bait fishing. I know I've been sitting down in my videos a lot lately, but, uh, you know, when you uh, have a job where you, where you work on your feet, uh, you don't feel like coming home or you know going out to fish and uh standing the rest of the evening too so uh, these little five dollar chairs that uh, my baby found at walmart have been quite invaluable we uh we tried the other side in fact that uh that nice little bulb patch that you can see over there across the way we tried fishing there and uh totally sucked uh we couldn't catch a single fish so i deleted the video where i did the intro there and now we're over here in the uh, the original spot. Uh, we actually had a pretty decent day pan fishing here uh, last summer. Uh, we got on a lot of things. We got like you can get on rock bass in the grass right there. Um, all along this tree, you can get on you know different kinds of pan fish, and we even caught a little bass about you know the size of my hand, and we ate it last year. Fish those pans. Uh, there's a little nibble, I think. Yes. All right, fish, come on, do something with it. All right, there we go. All right, first catch of the day. Gill. Gill the bluegill. And you are now bait, sir. There we go. I do believe I will put that lid on because he will hop out and make a great escape. Bluegill can hit the, uh, the underside of one of these lids surprisingly hard. Hard enough to make you jump out of your seat like what was that? This spot's so pretty I think I'm gonna make this a video whether we catch catfish or not. I uh, wish I'd have been uh, doing uh, GoPro videos from the very beginning because last year there was a, uh, I suppose a rather humorous moment where I uh, got caught up out on the edge of that tree there and I took my pants off and shimmied out to the edge of the deadfall to get my, uh, to get my lore back. Would have made, been some high YouTube entertainment there, me and my boxers scooting across that, that fallen log. It was shiny and I didn't want to lose it. I like things that are shiny, that's just my thing. There are some truly uh, trophy-sized rock bass in this little pond. I'm not sure why. 
what that's about. But we've caught some, some real big rock bass here. I definitely wouldn't mind catching one. I uh, probably wouldn't use them as bait, but it would be a neat little catch for the video. I don't think I've caught a rock bass in a, in a video yet, actually. Rock bass are neat looking, actually. They, uh, they are a type of panfish. Um, but they're, they're all green and black, and they have red eyes and a big mouth. Normally, there's some sitting right here. Gotcha. All right, well, here we go. A first for the channel. It, yep, it's not very big, but it is, in fact, a rock bass. Oh, look at that. Yeah. All right, you're a lucky little fish. You won't be used as bait because I like your species. I know that's speciesist, but oh, hope you didn't gut hook yourself there, buddy. Uh oh. You might be bait after all. Might be. All right. So in a uh, in a first for the fish dimension here, uh, I've caught these before, but it's the first time they've been on the channel. This is a rock bass. You can see uh, the identifying features are that they are green and black, as I said, black periculum. Uh, red eyes usually, and um, oh, uh, this nice big mouth, much like a green sunfish, but uh, I, I think they're they're a lot cooler looking, really. And uh, they can get really big. As as I said, there are some trophy-sized uh, rock bass in here. Uh, Gail managed to catch one uh, some time ago, but uh, anyway, there you go. If I get a better example, I'll show you that too. But uh, there we go, rock bass. So uh, th this little spot here, um, it's decent fishing all around this deadfall, but right here on the right side, for some reason, it's just a, a fish honey hole. It's, it's deep, it's close into shore, and it's got the, the cover of the uh, deadfall there. So uh, I don't know, it's just like a perfect spot. I get on, like, every species of fish I've ever caught here, I've caught right here that's been bass, rock bass, bluegill, uh, whatever the hell else we caught that day. Oh, uh, incidentally, uh, somebody in the comments recently said I should do a, sort of an equipment breakdown video. Uh, it was a good idea. I'd, I had planned to do that when I had more subscribers at some point, but uh, since it's already been requested, uh, I will be doing that. We have a lot, but we only use a kind of a narrow margin of it. I snagged the, uh, the limb. Don't look like that's coming out either. Why do I always throw in that spot? All right, well, you might see the fish dimension fall into the, the water here. Right into the fish dimension. Oh, for the love of Christ. Oh, there we go. Got it. Whoa. I hope you all saw that. That's some, uh, some action-packed TV here. Projectile fishing. Gotta say, uh, as ridiculous as this is, um, I'm loving the 50-pound the braid for being able to do that. Boy, it's just like old times. When... No. I got it back because of the braid, but it's just like when we uh, first came here and every five minutes we were thrown into a tree or snagging up on something. When you first start fishing, you suck at everything. You, you spend more time untangling knots and pulling yourself out of bushes and trees than you do actually catching anything. When I first started fishing a year ago, uh, I also didn't know like what I should be using when, you know? like. I was using medium-sized rods to fish for, for tiny little pan fish and, uh, you know, a 12-pound braided line to catch bluegill. You know, like, you, you just have no idea what you're doing. Well, I'm wondering... What'd you say? Oh, yeah? Prove it. There you go. Yeah, he's a good-sized bluegill. I'd say uh, on the 
But too large for bait size there. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. Very pretty. There you go. Show him off to the camera. All right. Bluegills small, bluegills large. Well, you can see the evening uh, bite kind of going on out there now. Uh, when the sun glints off the surface of the water just right, you can see all the little bait ball activities and the little blow-ups next to it, fish trying to get them. And you look out at that and you think, oh, fish. Yeah, it is a gorgeous sight. I mean, it's uh, it's often worth coming here just for the view. You feel like you're on vacation. I oh, don't know that sun's reading my face now, but uh, it is a gorgeous sight. This this golden shine over the water here. Gotcha. Uh, blue gill, I believe, yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah. That is a blue gill, and I do believe he qualifies as bait sized. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he'll meet his maker tonight. Look at us, doubling up. Oh my goodness, I got hey, you got a little bass. I'll bring him in for a look. And yeah, that... Well, well, look at you. You're the bass angler now. Always get all the little ones. The hell off my arm, bug. All right, buddy. Really? Oh, he's so pretty. Oh yeah. They turn into the, uh, the light a little bit more here. We'll get a nice golden glinty shot of him Jesus let you go. yep all right so there we are uh, uh not oft seen on the channel bass little bitty tiny fellow but on he a worm was chasing shad ah he was out there chasing shad well his mouth would be big enough for him yep even though he's small yeah I love uh, the way bass feel they're very silky yeah his mouth would definitely be big enough mm -hmm. he's got little teeth and everything all right well good job Thank nice you. catch Mal I'm gonna put him back. Made it a more interesting video. All right, he's back in the water. We we do not use bass as bait. We want them, yep, growing up big so that we can catch them later and show them off. Yeah, so we got a uh, bluegill, rock bass, largemouth bass, and uh, here on this channel we call that a good day. Yep, even if they're little. <laughs> 